Super Earth, our beloved planet, origin of mankind, has become under threat on multiple fronts. The infestation of the Terminids threatens to overwhelm all planets in their sight, while the robotic automatons seem intent on destroying mankind. It's up to the elite soldiers, the Helldivers, to protect Super Earth, maintaining liberty and democracy. And this concept made many fall in love with Helldivers 2, with the instant success shocking the public and the game developers Arrowhead, with its servers constantly reaching player limits that are in the hundreds of thousands. But this patriotic story of the Helldivers might not be as clear as it first seems, as whiffs of propaganda and cover-ups can be found across the galaxy leaving many to speculate the true reasons for war. An iceberg chart is a format to present these speculations and easter eggs, with the more well known topics appearing at the top of the iceberg. While the deeper down the iceberg you go, the more obscure and even far fetched the conspiracies become. We'll be covering the Helldivers 2 iceberg, but we have to be incredibly careful. What we are discussing could be considered treason, so be careful who you share this with. So let's enter our hell pot and launch into the discovery of the Helldivers Iceberg. And these hell pods are actually partially connected to our first point of discussion. When creating the first Helldivers, Arrowhead stated that they wanted to create something that held the essence of what we look for in games. They decided to go with a top down shooter, and at the time, they were obsessed with global politics and wanted to make a commentary on geopolitical warfare. They're huge geeks, so naturally they love their Star Wars, Starship Troopers, Aliens, etc. And so they mixed all that together to make Helldivers. Starship Troopers is definitely a core inspiration for Helldivers, and its story may sound familiar. It depicts a futuristic society where the military is glorified and caught in an interstellar war with the Arachnids. Written by Robert Heinlein, it's been adapted into TV shows and films, and all of this served as inspiration for Helldivers. In the novel, the military drops down to planets using drop pods, with them being known as Hell Jumpers. So there's definitely a deeper underlying connection to Starship Troopers, and we'll be occasionally referencing them here and there to help us formulate theories, as Arrowhead does love a good reference and especially an easter egg. For example, Queen Sparks noticed that the acquisition store contained a suspiciously similar review. Spectre left a 5 star review. I'm redacted, and this is my favourite product in the acquisition centre. This is a reference to Mass Effect 2, with Commander Shepard able to endorse shops in the Citadel in order to get a discount. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favourite store on the Citadel. And the reviewer's name, Spectre, could be a reference to Spectre, the elite group entrusted by the Citadel Council to preserve galactic stability. Quite a fun easter egg, however there is a more curious one that can be found in the Helldivers training mission, just past the rocket where Helldivers are deposited when they have passed their training. Hidden behind the mountain range is the common site of a Helldiver statue, but what's unusual is the object below it, something that the statue is saluting to. A shovel? Another shovel can be found randomly spawned on the planet, found next to a fallen human. He seems to have been preparing a grave, seems to have used this shovel to destroy a whole stalker. Shovels definitely seem glorified in Helldivers, and this begins to make sense when we listen to the fanbase. Shovels have been the most widely requested weapon for Helldivers, almost as if it was a meme. This is similar to Forklift. Was when Helldivers notice a vehicle bay on their Super Destroyer, they constantly badger developers as to when vehicles will be added into the game. But forklifts are a vehicle and can be found all over the galaxy. Developers Arrowhead, like their other easter eggs, embrace these fanbase memes, even releasing a parody video of forklifts and shovels. So these shovels are most likely a reference to the worship the fanbase gives them. Bar Loxlaw and Shadows of Doubt knows that this reference actually goes further back, with the shovel meme originally coming from Warhammer 40,000. Warhammer 40k is another inspiration for Helldivers, with many of the first game's factions being inspired by it, and like Helldivers, the fanbase is also obsessed with shovels. The troops of the Death Corps of Krieg are army men, who are often depicted having shovels, which they use not only as a weapon, 
but an aid to dig trenches, among many other things. The fanbase glorified this shovel into a meme, which has flowed all the way to Helldivers. And within the Helldivers Milky Way, this kind of infatuation stretches further than just shovels. All humans we talk to in Helldivers are enamoured with Super Earth, its managed democracy, and becoming a Helldiver. You truly are one of Liberty's greatest heroes. Liberating planets, destroying evil, and spreading freedom certainly sounds fun. But there are loose threads around this tapestry of freedom, threatening to unravel a different image. The shipmaster explains the Democratic Officer's role on the Super Destroyer. The Democracy Officer is here to optimize our citizenship. We're lucky. We should always strive to be the best citizens we can be. They act as a morale booster, one that encourages Helldivers to continuously launch themselves down to another planet, and most likely, to their imminent death. But why are Helldivers constantly being sent down to their deaths? Is this really all for freedom? Some have the traitorous thought that the Super Earth is actually evil, being the universe's aggressors as opposed to their saviour. According to the first Helldivers game, the bug's homeland is on a planet called Kepler Prime, and throughout the course of the game, Helldivers is sent to push back the bug's controls, all the way to Kepler Prime, where Helldivers land and are then instructed to reactivate oil pumps. This means the Helldivers have been on this planet before, perhaps aggressively trying to obtain oil, encroaching on the bugs. One of the missions in Helldivers 2 is to disable some illegal broadcasts. The Automaton's broadcast simply states, we have obliterated inequality, but the Terminator's broadcast sends a more concerning message. Wake up people, the bug problem is a Super Earth construct. It seems like there's a lot happening that Super Earth isn't letting us know about. And if we peel away this first layer of Helldivers lore, we can find that a lot of what we see and hear on our Super Destroyer can be viewed as satire. Our enemies can fight as hard as they like, but freedom always wins. As we travel deeper, deeper down these mysteries, it might not even be as simple as Super Earth being evil. But now that our eyes have been opened, with this first layer revealed, we need to understand that investigating much further will label us much more than just dissidents, as these mysteries just get more peculiar and darker. So like the Matrix, let's take a red pill and dive headfirst into the homeworld of the bugs, Kepler Prime. The Terminids are wretched creatures, bugs whose only goal seems to be to breed, spreading from planet to planet. But how do the Terminids even manage to spread themselves through space? Helldivers have super destroyers, while automatons have dropships themselves. There doesn't seem to be a simple explanation for how the Terminids spread across the galaxy. This question has mystified many Helldivers and scientists alike, and from the Helldivers 1 encyclopedia, Super Earth believed that super resilient microbes are launched into space from forces such as meteoroids. Starship troopers also had bugs that travelled through space. Known as the Arachnids, they conquered many planets, threatening the peace of the United Citizen Federation. And in the first movie, it's explained how they travel through space. They can colonise planets by hurling their spore into space. It's depicted that some sort of plasma or rock containing the Arachnids is launched into space, allowing the Arachnids to spread. In Helldivers, the Terminids congregate in nests, harbouring their eggs which they could be using to reproduce. But it's thought more likely that the spore spewers are the source of the Terminate spreading, either through an asteroid, or even clinging onto the clothes of the surviving Helldivers. But surely an asteroid would be easily identified by Super Earth before they could spread to other planets. In the novel of Starship Troopers, the explanation of bug travel was slightly different. They had transport bugs that would fly between planets. Onyx believes the large bug corpse that could be found on the Terminator planets could be a reference to this. With transport bugs existing, they just haven't been seen yet. But it's more likely that this is a reference to the boss in the first game, the Hive Lord, a bug that's capable of creating new tunnels for bug hives. So maybe it's a hint at what will be later added in the game. However, there's one more thought on how the bugs could be spreading, and that's through the control of Super Earth. The shipmaster explains the history of the Terminids. If the Terminids had stayed on the Element 710 farms where they belonged, all this bloodshed could have been avoided. It seems like the Terminids were being farmed, perhaps since the conclusion of the first Helldivers, and were used to extract Element 710. 
that Terminids spent decades content on the E-710 farms. Now their most destructive instincts run rampant, to the detriment of all. Whatever was the cause, it seems that the Terminids spread away from these farms, becoming more destructive, causing havoc amongst the galaxy. The service technician hints at what could have caused this change in the bugs. You know, these actually aren't exactly the same bugs we fought in the Great Galactic War. <laughs> yeah, 100 years of rapid evolution, not to mention all the genetic modification they got on the E-710 farms. So this forced mutation could have unlocked aggression in the bugs, instead of optimising the output of Element 710. Helldivers can be actioned to activate E-710 pumps on terminally controlled planets, and what looks like oil pumps spring back to life. 710. If we were to flip and reverse these numbers, we can see the word oil. And if we cast our mind back to the illegal broadcast we found on the terminated planets, there's another important message we can read. This threat is all about oil. The government made them. Seems like these bugs are being farmed for their oil, with Super Earth spreading these bug farms across planets, taking the terminators with them in order to generate more oil. Like terminators, hell divers are being spread across planets being set like puppets shuttling out of the Super Destroyer. Acceptable U4139 noticed something peculiar about each Helldiver. No matter the armour, each Helldiver had an insert located at the back of their helmet. He proposes that this is a place where the memories of a Helldiver can be uploaded. Each Helldiver uses the same resources, commands the same ship, and wears the same clothes, immediately after the previous Helldiver had died. It's often thought that this is because these bodies are clones, being chilled at the back of the Super Destroyer, waiting for their time to impose democracy. Well, the use of the same resources can actually be explained through reading the contract of employment that can be found just before the end of the tutorial. It states that if the contract of the enlisted is terminated due to the absence of a pulse, the equipment purchased, maintained, replaced, and improved by the enlisted shall stay with the destroyer shall be made available to the next Helldiver to command the vessel. It doesn't seem like the clone theory is that likely. As August KW points out, the default setting for Helldivers is to randomise their voice on deck, implying that it's another member being sent down from the destroyer. Game director Johan Pilisted helps refute the clone theory too, by stating that the Helldivers are real people with real families. But why are they frozen? It's not disclosed. When a Helldiver completes the tutorial, they commence their journey by clambering into a capsule in a rocket, which seems to be the beginning of their freezing process, being sent to their assigned destroyer. Maybe like Zarka Goyle suggests, these individuals are just frozen to save resources. The galactic war is expensive, so putting these Helldivers in a cryo sleep could definitely save costs. And maybe the hole in the back of their helmet, like Sign Ori suggests, is just to help monitor their vitals. Or maybe it is still to override memory, but it's not on a clone's body. One of the main points arguing against Helldivers being cloned is the amount of propaganda that's being fed to those who they want to sign up to become a Helldiver. If they were indeed clones, they wouldn't need any Helldivers to sign up. But perhaps one of the issues with Super Earth is that they lack the technology to produce humans for war, so they need citizens to sign up. Becoming a Helldiver before they're sent to the Destroyer, with their minds becoming overwritten by the player. It still keeps the division between the biological Helldivers and the mechanical automatons, who we haven't really discussed too much of yet. Perhaps we should travel deep into battle at that malevolent creek to discover more. Automatons are a mechanical threat to democracy, advancing their robotic selves towards Super Earth. But why? Snowman was one of the first to theorise that the automatons are actually not advancing to Super Earth, but instead, in respect to our galactic map, are pushing north to a liberated planet called Cyberstan. In the first Helldivers, Super Earth weren't actually fighting against the automatons. They were fighting a similar faction known as the Cyborgs, a group Super Earth deemed as terrorists that had broken away from the peaceful ways of Earth. They declare that Super Earth is alive and claim sovereignty from Super Earth settling their home in a planet called Cyberstan. The Democracy Officer states that, In the First Galactic War, we cast the Illuminate from our galaxy and secured the half-human cyborg safely in the minds of Cyberstan. But why would automatons care about the cyborgs? 
the automatons speak in some sort of as of yet indecipherable sound. The shipmaster states they managed to intercept one of the bot's messages. 01000001 01001000. That was the first intercepted bot message. Our analysts think it means kill all humans. From binary, this can be translated to the letters AH. Maybe AH stands for attack humans. Or maybe AH is an Easter egg reference to Arrowhead Studios. Not too much can be gleaned from this message. But there's another message that provides much more info. In 2021, Arrowhead released a series of cryptic tweets, with many more ones and zeros. Except this message was not simple binary. MDHX was able to decrypt this message by flipping all of the ones and zeros and converting from binary to text. And then, like a Caesar cipher, shifting every character 14 to the left. This revealed the following message. We, the collective from Cyberstan, unanimously assert our independence from Super Earth. We have the right to defend our home from the brainwashed Helldivers. Our children, the Automaton, will not suffer as we have under the oppression of Super Earth. So the Automatons could be the descendants of the Cyborgs. The Automatons, the Cyborgs, and Super Earth could have once come from the same civilization. There does seem to be some strange symbolism around skulls. Angel believes that like the cyborgs, the automatons are yet another splinter group, but this time broken up from the cyborgs, going fully mechanical, and they are intent on marching straight to Super Earth in order to harvest organs. At the automaton fabricators, some sort of sacrificial tables can be seen, with many deceased thief operators seemingly being chopped up very methodically. If the automatons were set out just to free the cyborgs, why would they be doing this? It seems like they use some sort of their harvesting to act as warnings for other humans, placing them as a chilling sign on posts. But most seem to have been placed in boxes, almost as if harvesting them for a specific purpose. Actually, if we have a closer look at these corpses, it seems that these are waste buckets, with many of the Dead Thief agents having stitches around their skulls. So it seems like there's only one important piece of material that the automatons want, the human's brains. Hmm, it seems like the automatons could be as evil as Super Earth themselves. It sounds like a very torturous thing to do. Why would they even do this? Well, maybe yet again their inspiration, Starship Troopers, could help us understand their motives. The Arachnids were revealed to have a more structured system, with brain bugs being able to control colonies to have a purpose. These brain bugs, similar to their name, were obsessed with obtaining human brains. It's thought that they sought after human brains in order to utilize the knowledge or memories of the victims. And this could be what the automatons are doing, dissecting the humans to understand their enemy closer. But others, like Lion Frenda, propose a more disturbing theory. And that's that they are using the brains to make more automatons. Because the automatons are humans. This could be why all the seep harvesting is happening near fabricators, close to the heart of their production lines. And as for the automaton's first intercepted message, AH, Lion Frenda believes that this could stand for all human. May the Lost Helldiver examines the automatons more closely, and notes that when they are dying, they bleed. Is this liquid oil, or is it blood? It's a bit hard to tell. If we sneak up to an automaton patrol, we can hear them singing in tune. Which is a bit strange for a fully emotionless robot to be doing. Both Arrowdeer and Beagle Supporter believe that they can make out the automaton's language, saying things like they are making me do this, and please help. But I can't really make it out. What do you think? In the first Helldivers, the Cyborgs had a unit known as the Grotesque. They were believed to be Cyborgs that have fallen in battle, being regrown into beasts, acting as fodder against the Helldivers. Could these automatons be doing a similar things to the Seaf agents, harvesting them into their own mechanical grotesque form? So from the first game, the bugs could have evolved into the Terminants, the cyborgs could be the creators of the automatons, yet there's still one faction in their first Helldivers that we haven't mentioned yet, the Illuminates. A highly advanced alien civilization, the Illuminate was said to have been mass-producing weapons, posing as a threat to Super Earth. 
And as our democracy officer mentions, the Illuminate were cast from our galaxy after the First Galactic War. Although the service technician does state the Illuminate has been eradicated. Simplest would be to eradicate them, like the Illuminate, but I don't know. However, if we cast our eye over to the TV within the Super Destroyer, we can see a news headline stating that rumours of the Illuminate sightings are work of dissidents. And to investigate this further, let's delve into the heart of the galaxy, the elusive Super Earth. The Illuminate could still very well be alive within the galaxy. They originally offered peace, but the War Start notice stated the Super Earth couldn't afford to trust them due to their stockpile of weapons. One of the Illuminate's most powerful tools is mind control, bending humans at their will. A few, like TRBD25, believe that Super Earth is actually controlled by the Illuminates. The Illuminates had a large AI creature, known as the Great Eye, that would monitor society, policing and correcting it. It sounds quite familiar to how Super Earth does their voting. I heard that some dissidents wanted us to select our own candidates instead of using the algorithm. <laughs> Great idea. Everyone will just become a political expert overnight. Treasonous morons. Wonder which candidate will be selected for me in this upcoming election. This kind of forced election, selected by an algorithm, does sound very similar to how the Great Eye would work. But there is one major flaw in this theory. If the Illuminate was powerful enough to hoodwink all of Super Earth into keeping the Illuminate safe, why would they choose to hide instead of appear as a threatening presence? Well, maybe they were severely depleted in resources, and maybe incredibly outpowered by Super Earth. So abiding their time, waiting to start a physical invasion. Maybe they are pushing war after war onto the people of Super Earth in an attempt to deplete all their resources, in order to defeat them easier. Even if it's not the Illuminate constructing these wars, the reason for fighting could still be quite sinister. The shipmaster can be heard complaining about the rapidly spreading bugs. You know, the problem with the bugs is that they're relentless expansionists. In their region of space, we found them on nearly every planet we've settled. Yet the subtle invocation in this statement is that this is Super Earth's problem, not just Terminus. They've been found on every planet that Super Earth has settled. It's Earth that's doing all the spreading. To go further with this, the shipmaster continues to complain about the automatons. Here's the problem with the bots, Helldiver. Their whole society revolves around violence. If they actually won the war, they'd have no idea how to function. This could yet again extend to Super Earth. There was a break of a hundred years between the Galactic Wars, but could it be true that Super Earth needed this war to function? It's an interesting thought. All the patriotism that we're exposed to revolves around war. It was definitely a possibility. Xtronix has a similar theory. Super Earth is fabricating these wars as a way to gain more resources. Helldivers has a concept known as a Game Master, one who is controlling the galaxy forming the battles, and helps shape the foundations of the war, while the players choose the outcome. Billistead told PC Gamer that they actually have someone hired with a job title of Game Master. His name is Joel, and he takes his job very seriously. So Joel seems to be the supreme overlord of Helldivers, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not a part of the game itself. Xtronix believes that this Joel is actually Super Earth. They are the ones dictating battles. The wins and losses of battles can almost seem unnatural, as if we have one puppet master puppeting the galactic war. They are the ones dictating battles. The other planets around are rich with people, and more importantly, resources, which Super Earth lacks. So Super Earth placed bugs on the planets to eradicate all opposition, allowing the Hell Divers to land, defeating the bugs, and claiming the resources. Many of the Terminator missions are to obtain resources, such as collecting Element 710, or conducting geological surveys for yet more resources. These are all resources that Super Earth are stealing from other humans. Other missions, such as to terminate broadcasts, do hint that there are some dissidents within these planets. It wouldn't be bugs broadcasting these signals. Although there is one mission that bucks this trend, Emergency Evacuation, where we evacuate civilians from the planet before the Terminators can get to them. Xtronix explains this as being Super Earth sympathizers, ones worth keeping alive. Or maybe they are civilians who will end up like the cyborgs, locked away in the mines. It could be a win-win, a new planet to colonize and extract resources from, and dead terminates producing more oil. But do terminates even produce oil? 
Oil seems to be one of the most precious resources around the galaxy. The automatons could certainly be made from them. And one mission the Hell Divers can have is to destroy the automaton resources, which has a very similar oil icon to the mission to extract E710. In fact, if we compare both of these facilities that house these missions, they both contain the same towers, have pipeways, and if we listen to the silo with the automatons, it sounds like there's some kind of liquid inside. Another curious feature that can be found on pretty much any planet, no matter if the enemy is an automaton or terminate, are these vertical shafts that kind of look like holes for terminates, with clouds of smoke or steam emitting from them. If we throw an explosive inside this hole, our hell diver will be blown to kingdom come, with the massive explosions happening deep below. Ivan Esco Deal proposed that these holes are hell bombs that fail to explode but are embedded deep, deep underground, and their explosions can be salvaged to destroy things just bile titans. But if we stop at this hole and listen, we can hear this strange bubbling, meaning that there's some sort of liquid down there. And dropping down this hole doesn't reveal much, only displaying a black and dark atmosphere around. Could this substance down below actually be oil? Or is this too many layers deep? If this was the case, it would make more sense that the Terminates are purely a militaristic weapon. Recently, a new major order was sent by Super Earth, revealing a different super weapon that the humans have been working on. Helldivers are tasked to activate Terminate Towers across the galaxy, effectively forming a barrier between Super Earth and the advancing Terminates. These towers, when activated, spray some form of gas across the atmosphere, Termicide, which is said to push the Terminates back quarantining them. But many think it might not be as simple as this. Since the first Helldivers, the Terminates have been kept on E710 farms where they were tested on, and as we discussed earlier, they evolved rapidly. Many think that this Termicide will only trigger this evolution further, with rumours of sightings of new bug evolutions appearing on these planets. And maybe this will be the time the Hive Lords return. Krovis Wolf has an even more disturbing theory. The Termicide will mutate humans so much so that they will morph into a new zombie-like enemy. In a hundred years, we're going to look back on Termicide as one of those big important inventions, like antibiotics or, or the voting algorithm. What really is Super Earth after? I'd say oil for now, but the story in Helldivers 2 is ever-changing, so more questions and answers are sure to come. But thank you for taking this dive with me. I hope you enjoyed the traitorous questioning of society as much as I did. In this galactic war, we don't know who we can trust, so stay vigilant and stay true to the managed democracy in your mind.